Previously, we found a general expression for the electric potential for a dipole. Here, I would like to find the electric potential for a rod of charge, but this time I am going to restrict myself to just looking at um, from that point on the plane that's the perpendicular bisector to our rod. And we'll say that the distance that we are away from the rod is D. And so the way we go about finding this is we will, again, look at a small chunk of charge right here, dq. And we'll have to express it in terms of something that we can integrate over. So we'll say that the width of this is dx. And our natural choice of integrating variable is going to be the x-coordinate if we put x equals 0 at the uh, center point. So this means that we'll run from x equals minus l over 2 to x equals plus l over 2 over here for a rod length of l. All right, so the same idea. We'll say that this chunk of charge right here makes a differential contribution to the electric potential at this point equal to dv. And that will be equal to k. We'll get all fancy and write as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught this time. And then our chunk differential chunk of charge here is dq. And we're going to say over r, but we have to figure out how to express our r in terms of our integrating variable. So this distance here is my r. Oh, that's not a good choice of color. Um, here we go. This distance here is our r. Um, and since my integrating variable is x here, We'll use the Pythagorean theorem to say it's the square root of x squared plus d squared. So the only other thing to do is to go and figure out how to express dq in terms of dx. So again, we can say that the linear charge density is uniform. Then this means that dq is to dx as the entire charge q is to the whole length. So we can write dq as q over l dx. So now let's make both of these substitutions into our expression for dv. dv will be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l dx over the square root of x squared plus d squared. Notice here that unlike when we we're doing this with electric fields, I'm not taking any components. Why is that? Pause and get back with me. Yeah, I'm not taking any components because the electric potential is a scalar. So that's the beauty of working with potentials. And then later, if we need to get the electric field, once we develop the clever tricks with derivatives, um, we'll just do those clever tricks and away we go. There we go. All right, so V then will be the integral. Well, let's see, we can pull out all these things are constant, so we can pull them out. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over L. And so we're just left with integrating dx over root x squared plus d squared. Now here you need to be a little careful because the limits of integration are indeed minus l over 2 to plus l over 2. But if you try looking stuff like this up in tables or using something like Wolfram Alpha or something like that, it can get a little um, fussy with you. That is until you recognize that this is a symmetric integral and so then you can go ahead and fold the integral, which is where you say it's 2 times the integral of 0 to L over 2. So we'll put a 2 in front, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 
q over l and now it's the integral from 0 to plus l over 2 dx over r root all right so this integral is eminently lookable upable epsilon naught um, q over l and then it turns out that the uh, um, this is the natural log um, I'll write ln, but I'll warn you, um, most physicists here will actually write log for natural log because there are only two base 10 logs that ever show up in physics. Almost every log is actually a natural log. But just so we're not confused, I'll write ln here. But if you ever see me slip and write log, it's the same thing. It's a natural log. So it'll be the natural log of, when you look up in the tables, you get x plus the square root of x squared plus d squared. And we have to evaluate this from 0 to L over 2. All right, so we can make this look a little bit prettier here. So we'll have 2 times 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over L. So this is going to be the natural log of putting in for L over 2 here. Um, this is going to be L over 2 plus the square root of L squared over 4 plus D squared. And then I'm going to subtract the natural log of when I put 0 in for X. So that's just going to be the natural log of the square root of D squared, which is the natural log of D. And you can probably make this look the prettiest if you remember that log A minus log B is log of A over B. So we finally end up with this is 2 over 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over L times the natural log of L over 2 plus L squared, square root of L squared over 4 plus D squared um, over D. So we can kind of try to check limits a little bit here. As D gets um, small, it should go to inf it should uh, go to infinity. And as D goes big, it should head off to zero. Um, to do both of those, you're going to have to do some L'Hopital action, um, but I promise you that the limits do indeed check out if you do that. Alrighty, so in the next series of videos, we're going to be taking this electric potential that we've developed and start using it to um, more quickly figure out our electric fields. See you over there.